So uh, we're going to focus on finding zeros given a polynomial. And before we do, I want to give us some, some tools. And so um, right now we have this polynomial, x squared plus 6x plus 8. And here it is in factored form over on the right. And you know, like 4 and 2 multiply to 8, add to 6. If we multiplied this out, we would get that. Um, so these are factors. of this. So uh, x plus 4 times x plus 2 equals that. That means that also uh, this polynomial divided by one of them is equal to the other one. You know, it's just like if I say uh, 12 is 6 times 2, 12 divided by 6 is 2. It's the same, it's the same relationship. So um, we know we know how to factor. We know how to take this and get it into this form, but sometimes we'll have something uh, larger than just a quadratic, like a like a cubic. And maybe we can factor this by grouping, or maybe not. But uh, if if our factoring tools don't work, we need another way to get at the zeros of this to find them. Um, and we're going to come back to this problem. This is going to be on hold till later. So we want to talk about how to do this sort of division. Uh, polynomial divided by another polynomial. In this case, uh, a quadratic divided by a linear. And so before I do that, let me do some long division that you may or may not have done in elementary school. Uh, 3501 divided by 12. So I'm going to show you long division. Long division is not the tool we're going to use, but I want to show it to you so I can develop a better tool to use. So right now, just enjoy the ride. Uh, don't worry about taking extensive notes or anything like that. So 12 goes into 3501. This would be our long division. And the way that we do long division is we think about, we take this and we say, how many times does this go into uh, this part? This basically this 3500 part. It looks like it goes into there twice. So I say twice. And then I do this multiplication. 2 times 12 is 24. And then I do subt that subtraction. If I subtract this, this is 9. And then I bring down the next number, 90. So then how many times does 12 go into 90? About 7. And then again, 7 times 12 is 84. Do it again. Bring down the next number, 1, 61. How many times does 12 go into 61? Uh, 5 times. 60. I subtract, and I have a remainder of 1. So basically, this divided by this is, there's two ways we can write this. We can say it's 275 remainder 1. The remainder is 1. Or uh, this this remainder, everything that's that's in here, that's in, in this area in here is being divided by that 12. So that one's still being divided by 12. So I, I could also say that this is, uh, whoops, sorry about that. That this is 275 and one still being divided by 12, but I just couldn't keep doing it. All right, so that is long division um, with number. You can do long division with, uh, with polynomials as well. So ex example, I, the problem we were just working on, or looking at, I should say, and divide that by x plus 4. Now, it's the same sort of setup, same sort of idea. Again, you're not going to do it this way, but I want to show you where this leads to a tool that we could use uh, when this is linear. Um, same idea, x plus 4 is going to go into x squared plus 6x. But all I really need to worry about is this first part, this x, and the rest is just going to come along for the ride. So x goes into x squared x times. In other words, what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to take this, whatever's here, so that when it gets multiplied by that, it'll match that x squared. Because I'm going to subtract it, I want it to go out. So x. x times x plus 4 is x squared plus 4x. And now I'm going to subtract. So as I go to subtract here, I'm subtracting the whole thing. So everything's uh, sign changes. 
x squared minus x squared is 0. I want that to happen. 6x minus 4x is 2x. Cool. I'll bring down the next piece. 8, just like over here, I brought down the next piece. Um, x goes into 2x two times. So now I'm going to have a 2 here. 2 times all this. 2x plus 8. I'm going to subtract it. So I can go through and change those signs. 2x minus 2x is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. My remainder is 0. So I don't have to worry about it. But notice that what I now have is this divided by this is x plus 2. Just like x plus 4 times x plus 2 is, is that. All right, so I'm going to do some long division on this one. I'm going to see if x minus 3 um, goes into that, if, if this 2x cubed blah, blah, blah is divisible by x minus 3. So uh, I got my x minus 3 going into, don't like that, try and make it a little straighter. Uh, I got 2x cubes. I've got negative 7x squareds. Now I need a placeholder here. Notice I have no x's. So I'm going to say plus 0x plus 5. And that's going to make my work significantly easier if I, if I keep that placeholder in there. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, 2x cubed. How many times does x go into 2x cubed? 2x squared times. And notice I know that because if I got 2x squared times x, I get 2x cubed. It matches. 2x cubed times negative 3 is negative 6 x squared and I'm going to subtract that so go in there switch all those signs 0 negative 7x plus 6x squared is a negative x squared bring down the next one plus 0x and then I, I keep going from there so x into negative x squared negative x again remember when I multiply I want it to match it so it subtracts to 0 negative x times x negative x squared Negative x times negative 3 is positive 3x. Go through, change the signs, because I'm going to subtract them all. 0x's, negative 3x. Bring down the next one, a 5. And uh, it looks like x goes into negative 3x negative 3 times. Uh, negative 3 times x, negative 3x, that's good. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 although I'm going to end up subtracting it. So 0, and then uh, 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So I have a remainder of negative 4. So this is equal to uh, 2x squared minus x minus 3. And I could say remainder of negative 4. Or, uh, and this is actually a little bit better, this negative 4 is still being divided by that x minus 3. So what I could say actually is plus negative 4 divided by x minus 3. What this tells me is negative 4, like this remainder of negative 4, this does not, this x minus 3 does not go into that evenly. Right? Like this is not a factor of that. I'm, we're going to have to do division problems like this, but I, this is pretty burdensome. So what I want to do is I want to show you synthetic division. And a couple things to notice in, in this long division, we've got some kind of rows, like the x cubes are all here in a row. The x squareds are all here, I'm sorry, in a column. The x's are all here in a column. The ones are all here in a column. We kind of have like a place that has meaning in this. So why do we need to write x cubed over and over again, x squared over and over again and all that? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift out the coefficients. So have two x cubes, negative 7x squared, I have 0x's, and I have 5 1's. So that already, and I just know that this right here is, is my x cubes, x squareds, etc. Okay, next thing. I know that this, this 3 kind of comes along for the ride, right, this negative 3. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put a negative 3 here, I'm going to put a positive 3 here. I'm actually going to put what makes this a 0 here. So this, this x minus 3, the 0 would be a 3. And I'm doing that, I'm, first off, I'm taking the 3 because everything gets, ends up getting multiplied by 3. But also because, notice how I always have to go through and like change the signs of everything. If I do it here, I don't have to do that later. All right, and here's the process for synthetic division. First term just comes down, 2. Notice that shows up right here, my 2. Now, 
to get this, I go two times whatever this is. Two times three is a positive six. See that positive six right here? And then I just add these together. Negative one. See that negative one right there? Uh, it's also right here. Three times negative one is negative three. Multiply. Add. Again, multiply. Add. And I'm done. Now notice what this just gave me. There's my two, my negative one, and my negative three. Two, negative one, and negative three. And it tells me my remainder is negative four. This is the exact same process as this. It's just streamlined. It's just done so much more efficiently. Um, you lose some meaning here. You have to remember that this came from an x cubed and that this came from an x minus 3. But that's okay. Like It's worth it to not have to write those symbols over and over again. And then the way that I interpret this answer is this was an x cubed, but when I did the division, my answer is going to be shifted down one degree from there. So now this is x squared. So this would be 2x squared minus 1x minus 3. And then I have a remainder of negative 4. So minus 4 still divided by that x minus 3. And notice that I, you can write it this way, minus 4 over x plus 3, or plus negative 4 over x minus 3, same thing. So that's synthetic division. I want to do a couple more examples of, uh, of synthetic division for you so you can get it down. This is a tool that we are going to use over and over and over again in this course. So now I'm going to do this division that's right here. And um, I have this divided by that x minus 5. So I'm going to use synthetic division for it. And I'm going to take this, uh, the zero from that denominator. So I'm going to take the zero from this, which is a five. And then pull out those coefficients, three x cubed, negative 12 x squared, negative seven x, and negative 40. And now I'll just do my synthetic division. And remember for that, bring it down. The first term just comes down, then multiply. And then I'm going to add, so that gives me a three. And then I'm going to multiply again. Uh, five times three is 15. And then I'm going to add 15 plus negative 7 is 8. And then multiply again. Uh, 5 times 8 is 40. Add those together, I get 0. My remainder is 0. And what's great about that is that tells me that this uh, goes into that. This, this numerator, this whole, uh, this whole uh, polynomial up here is divisible by that denominator. My remainder was 0. So... Uh, that means that once I do this division, let's see, this was cubed, it shifts down, so this would be 3x squared uh, plus 3x plus 8. And what that means is I can rewrite this, this numerator right here um, I, in a factored form. Like this, just this numerator, just this top part, is x minus 5 multiplied by this, by this uh, 3x squared plus 3x plus eight, this times that. Notice that helps me factor, and it's uh, factoring by division. I'm just using synthetic division. Now there is um, a pretty cool connection here. It's called the remainder theorem. And I'm going to change my pen. Uh, remainder. And the remainder theorem uh, basically says this. If p of x, some polynomial, is divided by x minus c, so in this case, like this part that's highlighted is p of x, x minus c, so c would be 5. Um, the remainder is p of c. So think about what that, what that means for a sec. So what that means is, if I take this, this 5 right here and plug it in for x here, it should spit out a 0. So in other words, if I go 3 times 5 cubed minus 12 times 5 squared minus 9 times 5 minus 40, I'll get 0. Oh, or uh, over here on this one that we did, uh, this was this was 2x cubed minus 7x squared 2x cubed sorry this one over here 2x cubed minus 7x squared 
uh, plus 5. If I plug a 3 into that, I will get negative 4 out. In other words, if I go um, 2 times 3 cubed minus 7 times 3 squared plus 5, it will equal negative 4. So this is actually, the synthetic division is actually also kind of a, a low computation way to, um, to evaluate these as well. And before we had great access to calculators, um, it was a pretty good way to do some evaluation, um, evaluating some values. It, it saved you some computational time. And uh, this implies then um, when, when this equals zero, x minus c is a factor. Right, like in this case, x was 0, so that means that x minus 5 is a factor of that polynomial. It goes into it evenly. All right, um, so how does, that, how does that help us? Well, let's go back to this original problem right here, this x cubed minus x squared minus 11x plus 15. And I'm going to tell you that let's say that um, in one of the cases, c is c is 3. In other words, I'm, I'm claiming that p of 3 is 0. So I'm actually giving you one of the zeros. And then what I might ask you to do there is just find them all. So let's see how that helps us. I'm going to create a little space and then we'll work on that. So um, there's my polynomial, my x cubed minus x squared minus 11x plus 15. And I'm telling you that c is c is 3. I think that 3 is one of the zeros. So what I'm going to do then is divide this by x minus 3. And notice my factor is x minus 3 because the 3, if I plug it into here, makes a 0. So let's do this the synthetic division. 3, um, x minus 3 is going to go into 1x cubed, negative 1x squared, negative 11x's, and a 15. All right, synthetic division, bring it down. So the first thing you do is just bring down the number and then start your multiply. Three times one is three, and then add, and then multiply, and then add, and then multiply, yes, and add my remainder is zero. So that means this divided by that is one x squared plus two x's minus five. By doing this division, I factored out an x minus 3, and what's left is an x squared uh, plus 2x minus 5. Now, then from there, my question is, what are the other zeros? Can I find the other zeros? So I could try and factor this, and if it was factorable, I'd be in great shape. It's not. I can't factor that. So I think what I'm going to do is use quadratic formula. Uh, so remember the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's when you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. All right, so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Negative 2 plus or minus square root of 4 plus 20 all over 2 is negative 2 plus or minus square root of 24 over 2. And I can do a little messing around with this 24. That is 4 times 6, and the square root of 4 is 2. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 2. These are both divisible by 2. Negative 1 plus or minus square root of 6. I suspect those are my other two zeros. I think my zeros are 3, negative 1 plus root 6, negative 1 minus root 6. Let me check. I'm going to bring up... Uh, Desmos and see what I can do from there. So let's see, my original equation was uh, x cubed minus x squared minus 11x 
plus 15. So I, I knew that one of them was three. There's my three right there. I've got this and that. Oops. Negative 3.449, 1.449. So I'm going to see it. Desmos should just calculate. So one plus square root of six. 3.44. Oh, it's a negative one. Whoops. Negative one, and then it was uh, negative one minus square root of six. There they are. Yeah, those are my, my other two zeros. Now, it wasn't factorable. Like, I couldn't factor to get there, but I could use quadratic formula to get there. So, I have all three of my zeros just from that piece of information. All right, let's try another one. All right, we are given this polynomial, p of x is x cubed minus seven x plus six. Uh, we are told that p of one is zero, so it actually gives us one of the zeros. And then we're asked to find all the rest of the zeros. So if p of one is zero, that means we should be able to do this division and work it out. I have one X cubed. All right, look, I have zero X squareds. I need that placeholder in there or my, my algorithm isn't gonna work. I have uh, one X cubed, zero X squareds, negative seven X's and six ones. Okay, bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, yep. Great. So here's what I did. I factored out an x minus 1. You can see that that's the 0. This was an x cubed. My division shifted the degree down 1, so it left me with an x squared plus x minus 6. So let's go from here. Uh, I know that 1 is one of my zeros. I'm left with this quadratic. Um, I can factor that. That uh, Things that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1 are 3 and negative 2. So this factors to x plus 3, x minus 2. Do, do, do. So there are my zeros are 1, negative 3, and positive 2. And I found them all. Hey, one thing I want to uh, point out here is if I were to take these and multiply them back together, I should get that. Well, if I multiply correctly, I will get that. So notice I can go both ways. Like if I know the zeros, I can build up the equation. If I know the equation and I get a little hint about where the zeros are at, I could tear it down to get to there. Uh, x cubed minus six minus seven x plus six. Let's graph that and just see what happens. Well, we have an idea of what's going to happen, but that's okay. X cubed, what was it? Minus 7x plus 6, 2, 1, negative 3. There's my zeros. So if, uh, if I actually take this whole thing, keep those roots the same, I can multiply by something out here like 3. Notice that stretches it out, but my zeros stay the same stay in the same spot or I could shrink it down like uh, one half kind of compress it towards the x-axis or one third one fourth but those zeros don't change because they're still time zero like it doesn't it doesn't change it these are sometimes also called roots for that for that reason let's go the other direction now and here's what I mean by that uh, I'm going to tell you there's a polynomial that has a uh, degree of three, and it has these zeros. All right, so uh, we're gonna write a possible polynomial for it. And we're not gonna worry about like if it's multiplied by something stretched in or out, I'm just gonna focus on the zeros. So if one of the zeros is five, it would have come from x minus 5. If 1's negative 2, it would have come from this factor, x plus 2. And 1 would have come from this factor, x minus 1. 
So now what I need to do is multiply this out. And there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to show you two ways. And basically, I'm going to have to go uh, two of these multiplied together, get an answer, and then multiply by the third one. So when I go x minus 5 times x plus 2, you can just do the distribute everything to everything. Like x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Combine some like terms. x squared minus 3x minus 10. Notice that's just the first two multiplied together. And then I will have to multiply by the third one. And I do the same exact type of thing. Um, if this starts to get messy for you, do it this way, um, where one of the sides is x minus 5 long, the other side is x plus 2 long, and then you can go x times x is x squared, x times negative 5, x times 2. It's really the same thing. It just kind of organizes the work for you. And notice you have the same pieces. You add those two together, and then you get that. So now I have to do the next multiplication. Same idea. I'm going to uh, distribute everything to everything. And I'll show you the, uh, the matrix way to do this as well, kind of the little box way. So x cubed times x. I'm sorry, x squared times x is x cubed. Um, x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. And I'll do the next one, negative 3x times x. And notice I'm going to, is negative 3x squared, I'm going to line them up like this so that my addition is easier later on. Uh, negative 3x times negative 1 is 3x. Then distribute that negative 10. Negative 10 times x is negative 10x. Negative 10 times negative 1 is positive 10. I add all those together, I get x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x plus 10. All right, let me show you the uh, kind of the box way to do it. I have three terms and two terms. So x cubed minus 3x minus 10, x minus 1, x times x cubed. Oh, sorry, that was an x squared. Dink, x squared, x squared times x, x cubed, negative 3x times x, negative 3x squared, negative 10 times x, negative 10x x times negative 1, negative x squared, negative 3x times negative 1, 3x, negative 10 times negative 1 is 10, and notice that my like terms line up this way. I can combine them, and I would get, I should get the same answer, except notice here, you might have noticed, I added wrong. A negative x squared minus 3x is negative 4x squared. So there's my x cubed minus 4x squared, negative 7x, plus 10. All right, uh, let's do a couple, couple more like this. All right, my degree is 3. My zeros are 0, 2, and negative 2. So this would have come from an x plus 2. This would have come from an x minus 2. And this would have come, I could write x minus 0, or I could just say it's just x. All right, and now I'm going to multiply it out to get my polynomial. Um, notice I have a difference of squares situation here. If you do, do that multiplication first, if you have this situation, because the middle term drops out, right? Like, like x minus 2 times x plus 2, x squared plus 2x minus 2x, minus 4. That middle term drops out. So if you do this multiplication first, you know it becomes that. And then it's it's pretty easy to distribute that into there, x cubed minus 4x. So this is my polynomial that will have those zeros. Thinking back to that graph, I could multiply this by anything. I could multiply it by 7, it would have the same zero, 17, negative, uh, 1.7 anything um, you don't have to do that you can just leave it in its kind of simplest simplest form all right two more examples so fourth degree so i'm going to have four of them uh, x minus one from from the one x plus one from the negative one x minus two x plus two 
look, I have two differences of squares here. I have this one and this one. So if I multiply this out, it would be x squared minus 1. And if I multiply this, it would be x squared minus 4. Cool. So then from there, I can uh, draw my box if I want, or I can just distribute everything to everything. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared minus 4x minus 4x squared. Negative 1 times x squared, negative x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So I have x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. Now that is actually easy for me to check because I have a graphing calculator or I use Desmos, either either case. I think in this case, I'll just, I think I have Desmos up, so I'll just use it. So it's pretty easy to check. Let me graph it and make sure it has those those repeat, those zeros at, at where I thought that they would be. Um, so x to the fourth minus 5x squared um, plus 4. Yep. And in using this, like to that, get that fourth power, I just use the caret button, shift 6. So I will literally type x, shift 6, 4 to, to get to that. All right, one last example. Fourth degree, it has these zeros. And let me go at it. Uh, zero would have come from a factor that is just x. Three would have come from x minus three. Two would have come from x minus two. Negative one would have come from x plus one. Remember, if you plug this into the factor, it makes a zero. Okay, so gosh, uh, I'll multiply these two out first. So x times x is x squared. Uh, negative uh, x times 1 is x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x, so that should be x squared minus x. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Um, I think I'll, yeah, I think I'll just distribute that into there. So this is x squared minus 3x. I'll see what happens from here. Um, you can distribute this to everything or you can use the box. I'm going to distribute x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times x is uh, negative x cubed. x squared times negative 2, negative 2x squared. Okay, negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times negative x is positive 3x squared. Negative 3x times negative 2 is positive 6x. If I throw everything together there, I got an x to the fourth. Uh, negative 4x cubed plus x squared plus 6x. And you know, I want to I want to check that. On Desmos and see if it works. So I got x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, and then I press the arrow to get out of that exponent. There we go. Gosh, that's so much better. That scared me. 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1. Yes, I am right. I multiplied it out right correctly. It's always a good idea to check. Then you can kind of go back and, um, and double check your work if it's wrong. All right. Uh, boy. That's a lot, but this is meat and potatoes are the first part of this course. Being able to find zeros is really like what the first part of uh, 141 is about. So send me any questions that you have. Give those problems a try from the assignment, from the assignment set, and uh, good luck.